Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. In the realm of the spirit, time and distance does not operate the way it works here. If I need to move from here to this fan, I will have to walk. But in the realm of the spirit, I can be here and immediately leave this spot and I am there. An example, what happens to you when you are in a dream? You can be in a dream and in one moment you are in a house and then the scene changes, you are somewhere else. The same you. And yet you are still there lying down in your room. Are we together now? Now, in the realm of the spirit, the Holy Spirit, listen carefully, the Holy Spirit is not the only one who has information. Any spirit at all, including the devil, has some information that is higher than this earth realm. Are we together now? You would learn that there were times the Bible records how that these these fallen angels came and the bible says they had interactions with the daughters of men they did not just come and meet them and produce giants out of them there were things that they taught them there were certain forbidden knowledge that was given to them satan himself is not an ignorant spirit i hope you know that because satan was once in heaven number two it was not satan alone that fell in heaven he fell with other spirits and there is no record of eroding the memory of the things that they know they still have that knowledge many people have interacted with strange spirits entered into all kinds of fraternities and covenants with them in exchange to superior knowledge they have used it in it they have used it to advance technology they have used it in different forms and in different fashions and some of them are honest enough to tell you that it was not just the making of themselves they were assisted by the realm of the spirit so when you are open to the realm of the spirit you will encounter many things can i tell you this if you do not know the road to go to a place and you find me there i can lead you anywhere and tell you that's where you were to go to this is what is happening to many people so they are open to the realm of the spirit because of the energy that is exerted through fasting and prayer spiritual exercises the moment you do that it is easy to have that ascendance in the spirit but the challenge is when you are there now satan is more than happy to hold your hand and usher you and he will give you a tour that is not consistent with the character of Christ. We return with some of these experiences and because we do not have a system of verification, this is also the reason why there is a lot of inaccuracy even in the prophetic. Because the prophetic works by the same formula. You are open to the realm of the spirit and you capture speakings, sights and sounds from the realm of the spirit. But when there is no system to order and organize it, based on scripture, you can download all kinds of things. That's why some work, some don't work. Because they are a capture of mass information from the realm of the spirit. What I'm teaching you may look a bit complicated, but just pay attention. You will understand what I'm saying. Hallelujah. I have had several visionary encounters 
by the grace of God this is a realm of reality that I live in and I can tell you if the Lord did not teach me the system of guidance that I want to provide for you I probably would have been in all shades of error by now all shades of error the next thing I need to teach you about the realm of the spirit is that the realm of the spirit operates with similitudes and you must understand not the activity but the spirit the meaning of those activities because one of the reasons why error has come into the body of Christ is because most times we want to repeat exactly what we saw happen in the realm of the spirit so I give you an instance if in the realm of the spirit I I look at these people in the realm of the spirit and I see them maybe dancing or doing some kind of thing I may not stay to decipher the essence of what was happening I will come down and want to act out the same thing I saw so if I see someone walking five times from the realm of the spirit it may be a prophetic typology of something but then I come physically and I now say well based on what I saw except if God says to act it out but I now tell the person do what you saw and by the time that person leaves and gets result someone else will come and before you know it it will become a spiritual pattern are we together now yes someone will now go to his house and say for me to get a miracle I must walk around five times with no understanding when god began to open me up to encounters i became troubled myself once upon a time those days in zaria there was such a move of the spirit and people started having extraordinary encounters where they would have what you know to be gold dust silver dust physically gold dust will begin to appear and it, there is an encounter that happened like that one time in church history it began to happen in several places and people started idolizing those encounters it didn't last more than three weeks and god seized it till tomorrow it was an act of his mercy otherwise some people would have built monuments around it you see that now there is a serious disclaimer listen do you know why i'm teaching you this don't just get believers born again and start stretching them fast 21 days fast 30 days unguided and unassisted it looks like an accurate spiritual journey but you are about to lead the people into experiences that their maturity cannot handle they will interact with devilish spirits they will return with arrogance from that encounter until the fatality that happens in their future brings you to remorse you now regret the fact that you expose the people this way we have to be careful there is a pattern for spiritual growth and if we do not submit ourselves to it we will be in trouble when Jesus Christ began to walk with the disciples we must follow the order and the pattern that he used to build the saints are we together now yeah. supernatural encounters the realm of a spirit is a very vast realm full of all kinds of possibilities haven't said this the bible itself listen carefully the bible provides a road map into profitable spiritual encounters the bible scripture provides a road map into profitable spiritual encounters that means that it is possible for you to enjoy supernatural encounters benefit from them and yet not bring error out of them to deceive the body remember the morale of this teaching is to help us experience encounters one of the graces that we have enjoyed and we enjoy in this ministry is the grace for encounters but i will tell you why it has been effective without birthing all versions of error almost all encounters if left unbalanced will bring error almost all encounters if left unbalanced or even, how do i put it now is, is it unbalanced will bring all kinds of error the body of christ today is like a patient in icu and encounters have brought these kinds of imbalance there are men and women of God today who will die believing what they are doing because it came from encounters 
there are individuals today who will die believing what they are doing because it came from encounters and you see one thing about conviction is conviction will always lead to influence the moment you are convicted about something eventually someone will believe you I hope you're understanding what I'm teaching so far yes so the Bible provides a biblical roadmap to supernatural encounters this was the first thing the Lord began to teach me that before I am open to these extraordinary spiritual experiences I must understand the pattern of Scripture so that all of these encounters I have will pass through the sieve of the word the sieve of how God behaves let me tell you there are many encounters in my life that scripture has filtered you will never hear me share them I have met many many demon spirits but it may just be one or two occasions that you hear me say that because you see when you are teaching this is the reason why most times I do not like to talk about my encounters do you know why I do not want you to build your conviction based on those encounters alone i want you to build your conviction based on these foundational encounters that i want to show you the average believer today who is exposed to the apostolic and prophetic ministry for instance will feel bad feel insulted and even feel unspiritual if they are not seeing visions it's almost like a stigma to your spiritual experience how long have you been born again 10 years do you see do you hear well not exactly I hear the Holy Ghost sometimes well, ah, I say, my goodness my God that means something is wrong with your Christian experience so in a bid in a bid to honor um, what you call your pursuit for spiritual growth there is such an itch and an appetite for any extra anything that just just let me hear a sound let me see a being demonic or spiritual let me just see something and hear something and because of that hunger on one hand God intends to give you these encounters but the reason why for many of us God does not bring those encounters is because you have not been taught how to decipher encounters to profit from them it's not because your spiritual level has not reached there God just wants to help you he's withdrawing these encounters is an act of mercy to help you stay true to doctrine are we blessed this is how the Lord taught me the apostolic and the prophetic ministry will expose you to various encounters you will not believe how many things I've seen standing here and preaching if I did not have this understanding that I'm teaching you you will never almost be able to settle down and teach a correct sermon every sermon will be turned to revelation because as for sight you will keep seeing the discipline to be able to turn down these things and focus on doctrine to mentor believers many sincere people do not have that every time their eyes see something there is an urge to say what they are seeing and it becomes a distraction to mentoring believers so you see that services become full of just revelatory processes not revelation of scripture prophetic revelations and there is a place for that don't get me wrong except that after a while you see that believers don't mature again and then the body of Christ also has been baited into that state of that spiritual state when you come and sit down and the truth is being taught that interest to endure doctrine is not there again apostle this is 30 minutes you've not seen anything so pastors and ministers are under pressure if you want membership be ready to see something or say something i don't care what you know if you are not seeing and you are not saying anything be ready for empty pews we must balance this remember that i love the body of christ and remember that everything i say is to the intents that we become matured are we together now The average man of God is under severe pressure right now pressure for the prophetic pressure to be able to reveal something if you go to pray with someone and you bring Bible verses and you tell the person 
Acts chapter this verse this says this you, you, you can even see the disconnect we wasted our time prepared honorarium cooked food to come and receive this rubbish there you see that there, there is something wrong while you are laughing I want you to pay attention you may not see the effect now let it continue down the line that's why people lie even with the prophetic because there has to be a way that pressure makes people lie we say things God is not saying body of Christ hear me this is not just a message for koinonia this is a message for the body of Christ when a man of God can teach scripture and help you understand the ways of God he's under pressure because he looks like a fatal failure as far as ministry is concerned I don't know what happened to your eyes and your ears but we're not interested and very clearly the person becomes frustrated and as a result he will say you know what if this is the formula for relevance let me go for my fasting and the devil says exactly this is what I wanted he waits for you and once you are done with your fasting and all of that he now shows up and begins to introduce you into all kinds of things you find out that the more you see the more you are deviating from God's patterns many people did not start the way they are now let me tell you I submit to you it's difficult to live in the realm of encounters and still be sound and detailed this is what I want to teach you now there is a roadmap that if you follow if you follow you will never mislead the body through encounters your encounters will profit you and then profit the body if you are operating in the prophetic here please listen to me because this is this particularly will help you are we blessed So the Bible lets us know that encounters are very important. They create conviction. Whether encounters just with the word as you're studying or visionary encounters. When God was giving me a revelation about this ministry, I had supernatural encounters. I've shared some of them with you. My life is full of all kinds of encounters at different junctions of my life. You would hear fathers like Bishop David Oedipo share their encounters. They would tell you he was in an 18-hour vision. Is that true? And he saw this and that and explain it. Several other men of God will tell you there are others who were led by angels into realms and they were taught certain dimensions of the healing ministry. There are people who had all kinds of encounters some of them have profited the body of christ today now let me begin to teach you how to balance encounters rule number one no encounter is equal to doctrine no encounter no visionary encounter automatically becomes a doctrine do not make doctrine out of encounters do not make doctrine out of encounters doctrines listen encounters are they, they are classified in a category of dealings called personalized dealings personalized dealings means that is god's way of working with you to help you to be effective it will profit the body of christ but do not turn encounters into doctrines so if let me let me just leave that issue so that we don't create trouble in the body of christ but it's very important for you to know this rule number one do not suddenly turn an encounter into a doctrine the doctrines of scripture are already stated it is true listen carefully there is a reason why these doctrines were put here in scripture and if we violate them do you know what will happen we will start creating pseudo christian experiences that are not exactly god rule number one do not create doctrines out of encounters number two every encounter must submit to scripture 
every encounter you must vet your encounters from the lens of scripture every encounter no matter even if it's jesus you see any encounter must submit to scripture no matter how extraordinary that encounter is number three you interpret encounters listen carefully or let me put it this way scripture becomes your lens for interpreting encounters do not interpret encounters with feelings you must go to scripture for instance two of us can have a vision i can see a chain in the spirit you can see a chain too it means different things to both of us we cannot create i'm saying this with every sense of respect and responsibility to the body of christ there are people who god has helped to bless the body in whatever capacity and we honor them but there is a big mistake do not say every time you see chains it means bondage it is not true you have to go to the bible to get your explanation not your mind a chain does not always mean bondage nakedness does not always mean shame so by the time i put all these things if you see a chain bondage if you see nakedness shame nakedness can mean intimacy it can mean you are growing with the holy ghost the holy spirit and scripture has to interpret that are we together now most people just come up with their ideas about encounters this is what i saw this is what i saw i think this should be it and we ship it down and mislead people that includes dreams look up please when you wake up from a dream you don't just go and buy a book to interpret it except if that book submits to scripture are we together now many belief systems that have authorized satan to destroy us today came from these dreams and encounters take note of these rules one remember that no encounter in itself becomes a doctrine no the doctrine of scripture is written do you know the thing about doctrines doctrines should be taught and explained not created the doctrines that make for the maturity of the believer is already there you have to understand this every other thing supports our growth it does not create the basis for it the bible listen carefully the bible has already set the manual for the growth of the believer there's no need to invent another route for spiritual growth jesus the early church the patriarchs have set enough precedence there is no level of spiritual growth you want to attain onto that scripture has not provided the roadmap for so doctrines must submit to scripture and your interpretation must come from scripture not your ideas scripture hallelujah your interpretation must come from scripture now listen very carefully the holy ghost when he began to teach me about encounters he taught me four cardinal encounters listen carefully don't assume you understand what i'm saying there are four foundational encounters and the holy spirit taught me that these are the major encounters every believer must have if you do not have these four encounters no matter which other encounter you have there will be trouble i'm going to run through them because of time why am i teaching you this so that when you begin to have extraordinary encounters because you see soaking yourself in this glory is exposing you to the realm of the spirit and you must be guided by scripture so that we do not have all kinds of error that come and then you connect the error to koinonia you say it was when i came for koinonia i fell under the anointing and i was in the realm of the spirit this is what i saw this is how i came and you see the way the devil does it is he will take advantage of this atmosphere to mislead you when you now tell someone it was in koinonia that thing started he will usually believe you and respect you but up you go into the realm of error Are you blessed i have kept these four encounters and i pay attention to them my entire life 
these are the encounters that have become pillars that guide me as i approach the realm of the spirit and i'm introducing you to this and this is also a message to the body of christ these encounters that i'm about to list and maybe briefly just touch they supersede any other encounter listen if these are the only encounters you have in your life and you never have any vision again in your life you will still fulfill your god-given mandate the foundational encounters that every child of god or everyone on earth should have are you ready for this have you understood everything i've said so far yes I want you to appreciate these things that we teach because number one they are consistent with scripture but number two some of these trainings came from a standpoint of pain blood and tears I'm praying that you will place value on them some of you what I'm saying you may not need it now until you keep rising one day you will see and thank the Lord that you got this doctrinal balance even as you approach the realm of the spirit some of you as I share this with you the Lord will use it to give you hope and give you confidence as far as your Christian experience is concerned four encounters the Lord taught me number one the first encounter that every believer must have is encounter with Jesus the son of the living God please write it down it does not mean a visionary picture of Jesus you can have an encounter through scripture an encounter through the word of salvation with Jesus the son of the living God please write it down just be patient and write it down the Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son he says that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life can I tell you this no matter how many visions you see in your life if you do not have an encounter with Jesus the son of the living God you are going to hell it's as simple as that encounters don't redeem people it is Jesus that redeems people encounters don't give people eternal life it is the son of the living god so if you have 30 encounters in your life and jesus is not part of them you are on your way to hell ladies and gentlemen please hear me this is this these are safety nets an encounter with the son of the living god the first encounter that the hunger of any living being would push him to in that order is an encounter with the son of the living God it is a foundational encounter you must have you must pray that everybody around your life your church they must have that encounter what does it mean to encounter the son of the living God that the Holy Spirit through the ministry of the gospel will furnish the reality of the love of jesus the love of the father to your heart and bring you to a point where you accept the truth of his substitutionary sacrifice are we together now to the end that you receive of his life eternal life the bible says it's an encounter this is the record that god hath given us eternal life and this life is in his son he says whosoever hath the son hath life eternal everybody say encounter with the son there are many people today i'm sorry to use this expression but even people in ministry who operate the prophetic but have not had this encounter I hope you know that yes there are people who came just from tradition and then they came into the city and just continued what they were doing an encounter with the Son of God I know people who started having visions and had prophetic inclinations even before they got born again yes that is a possibility your very wiring your very prophetic wiring can tilt you to the prophetic and people can begin to recognize it some of you know people like that in your villages they are sincere people they don't practice any evil that you know but we call them seers they have eyes that see 
they can tell you be careful and what they say will happen exactly so can i tell you those same people need encounters the encounter with the son of the living god this is doctrine if you do not have an encounter with the son of the living god you are in trouble why because no other encounter sustains the power to save you and translate you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of god's dear son my brothers and my sisters no matter how long you fast no matter how long you pray no matter how many realms and dimensions you step into even if you go to heaven even if it's a true heaven and you come down if you don't have an encounter with the son of the living god you are going to hell it's as simple and honest as that are we learning the first foundational encounter that every believer must have encounter with the son of god number two very quickly the second encounter is an encounter with the person and the ministry of the whole and the ministry of the holy spirit in that order second only to your encounter with the son of the living god you need an encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit please look up the ministry of the holy spirit is not for pastors the ministry of the holy spirit is not for preachers it's not just for some supernatural people the ministry of the holy spirit is for everybody jesus told us that he is the only shorty to our being guided he says when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth satan can use truth to destroy it's not only a lie that destroys the truth can destroy too many believers have not been introduced into this encounter with the person of the holy spirit <laughs> an encounter with the holy spirit is more than praying in tongues no just because hands were laid on you and you are praying in tongues when we say have you met the holy ghost you say yes no 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 just because you have eaten someone's food does not mean you've met the person no you benefited from the person but have you met the person can i tell you this especially for those of us who are called into ministry all those who have been mightily used by god from scripture and modern history and even today will tell you they can trace their exploits to this one encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit we've dealt with that here so i don't want to go so deep into that the holy spirit realized the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is not an archangel. The Holy Spirit is not one of those winds flowing in the realm of the Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit is God. You can encounter his office. When you are encountering the Son, he plays a role there. But you can en encounter the person of the Holy Spirit. It is true. The benefit of that encounter is guidance. I've taught you. The benefit of that encounter is empowerment, direction, the Holy Spirit. So that whatever you see and whatever you hear, you can trust him to guide you. He will tell you what is from him and he will tell you what is not from him. You do not use the purity of what you are seeing to know whether it's from God or not. No, it is the voice of the Holy Spirit that will help you decipher. You will see many good things in your Christian experience, but they are not from God. It's not in this kingdom, it's, we don't deal with good or bad. We deal with whether the Holy Spirit is involved or not. No matter how good it is, if the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of the Father, is not involved in that process, stay away. No matter how good. Encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Koinonia is God helping you tonight. So there are times while I'm having several visions, maybe in the miracle service and all of that, you see it happen. I can have the vision, say, of a coffin and I can see death. Now, I don't just announce the Holy Spirit. Listen, all of those visions will pass through the sieve of these foundational visions these foundational encounters are we together now any vision i see that does not glorify the sun i will never announce it i will throw it like that the same way you are passing the street and you see a madman 
you just know that somebody was there and you passed you are focusing on what you are looking at there are many other things you will see other than what god wants you to see but you must first ask yourself a question this is why i'm teaching you this because i have had this encounter with the son of god every other encounter i have i must ask myself does this encounter reveal jesus and does this bring him glory either in my life or the life of those i'm about to minister to if it does not capture the revelation of the son and the glorification of the same no matter how spectacular the vision is i will dump it is someone learning now an encounter with the son gives balance to every other encounter you have if it does not reveal the son and does not bring him glory throw it out of your life number two an encounter with the holy spirit the holy spirit gives you direction the holy spirit gives you guidance let me tell you this i wish we had the time i hope you know that in your christian experience you will get to a point where you will meet a lot of people with influences that produce results but if you have a rich ministry with the holy spirit you will be able to know that this is not the holy spirit and you may even be able to help them listen in my life and in ministry i've had the opportunity of praying for people especially kids kids that they brought that were demonstrating superhuman abilities it was because of this relationship with the holy spirit are we together remember in the book of acts the experience of paul remember the little girl who was using divination many of us now would have entered partnership with her in ministry many of us you can't allow that opportunity to pass you by like that that is a rich opportunity for strategic alliance she even volunteered this is a great man i mean what else would you for someone to announce you using her credibility but he looked and looked and said no something is wrong the Holy Spirit I have met people in my life this is a true story I have met people in my life who called my name and prophesied to me and they were not Christians they've not given their life to Christ not it's not something hidden I remember one time I think it was Niger I was going to have a meeting I think it was Niger Republic or so and we were going we went we flew to Lagos and then went by road somewhere when we were doing just the immigration formalities I remember some of you go to the market and you see these people they are there they can call your name with uncanny accuracy if you do not have an encounter with the Holy Spirit your search for visionary solutions will lead you to delusion Joshua Selman ah who are you well I'm not exactly an evil person but I'm not by everybody's visionary experience is powered from a source what source powers that vision it is not the correctness of the information is the source that powers it and listen you have no right to just look at people and begin to judge them if your own relationship with the holy spirit is not alive by what parameter you will become judgmental and you will mix both good and bad and call everybody fake it is on the strength of your relationship with the holy spirit you can decipher Are we learning now yes sir there are times that i've shaken hands with people and i look at them sincerely and you see them manifesting a semblance of the anointing and i know this is not god sometimes i make one statement and they are delivered there and they themselves will be surprised i know a woman one time that i prayed for this woman would have visionary encounters people would come to her house she can pray for you she said she had testimonies of people who were barren who god opened their wombs but she knew something was wrong because when she lies to sleep she will be tormented by evil spirits yet this gift supposedly was working in her life the day i met her she came thank god she was a sincere woman she was honest and she told me she said this is a gift that has been working in her life people have sowed into her life she's had results but i knew this was not the spirit now it didn't mean the woman was bad i have a relationship with the holy ghost i know how he operates i know what is not him and i held the woman's hands and i prayed for her why did they flog the apostles in the bible 
because they tampered with somebody's way of getting money there were some evil men who saw that young girl and when they saw her instead of them to lead her to someone who will help her they decided to cash in on the opportunity while those demons continue to torment that girl i love the apostles when they came they didn't have time for rubbish they rebuked that spirit even though they flogged them later on but at least jesus was glorified are we together encounter with the holy spirit listen to me until you cultivate your relationship with the holy spirit you will never step into the realm of discernment and sensitivity and in this end time brothers and sisters you need sensitivity there are many things that look like god that is not god there are many things that look like god speaking to your destiny i can prophesy favor upon you now and say in the name of Jesus Christ be favored you will say amen the moment you say amen you will see a text in your phone after service and it's 419 people they will tell you give us your account number give us something and um, um, there is some money that you want somewhere you have you seen those kinds of people and the devil will now connect it to the prophetic word of favor and that begins your destruction for instance but when you know the holy ghost you know how he operates you know that this is not god and you dump that nonsense out of your phone and give yourself rest there are times you sit down and you are doing you are talking with people you are about to do a business with them they are so articulate they are intelligent everything is right but here comes the holy ghost again it tells you no no i know i told you that i will bless you next week but this is not it the blessing is coming but this is not it and there are times that many things will not look like it but it is it it is still him that will tell you you see that is the strange thing with the holy spirit you will see a job that does not look like it and the holy ghost will tell you take that job Fifty thousand. when i am waiting for one that will give me 250 and the holy ghost will tell you take it but this does not look like the vision i saw because you have an encounter with the holy ghost he will say take it whilst you are in that job your uncle will come and it is through that job you'll be sent for a training and you will meet your destiny helper and within five months you will leave that job into where god showed you now had you not heard god you will not even know how to navigate to that realm are we learning now number three very quickly encounter with the word of god it would never tire me to teach you this you have to learn it the third foundational encounter you must have superior to all other encounters is an encounter with the word of god please look at me if you are not sound in scripture you see deception will be the devil will take you for a ride you have to be sound in scripture encounter with the word of god what is the word of god the word of god is a compendium of the mysteries of the kingdom god's modus operandi the word of god reveals number one god's character number two the word of god reveals how god operates when you encounter the word of god you know how god operates and you know how he does not operate there is a way the God of the Bible never operates, never operates, never operates. Most believers are not sound in scripture. That's why it's easy to fall into the trap of deception. The devil comes and markets all kinds of lies and just sways us like that. Listen, in this end time, we need high level illumination, knowledge of God's word to know what to do. There are people who have no business relocating abroad, but because they do not understand the character of scripture. Someone just tells you, I want to lift you. You have to go back to that encounter. How does God lift? The things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. Many things that we have called greener pastures are not greener pastures. Greener pastures is the word of God. 
you see that i'm not saying there's anything wrong having all these experiences but the word of god must be your guide can i tell you this as powerful as supernatural encounters are if you start ministry just because you saw a vision you will suffer as if it's not god that called you there are people today who are frustrated and sometimes sincere people when they come they say apostle i can't understand they will show me a documentation of their vision and i know truly that vision came from god but it is the principle of scripture that controls your success the visions are only support systems to help guide your conviction when jesus came and walked upon the earth is it not heaven that he came from why did he need to learn scripture why would you come from heaven through the womb of a woman and submit yourself to the learning of scripture from heaven jesus did not come from the realm of the spirit he came directly from heaven not even heaven from the throne he came to the earth and submitted himself to this encounter so when satan came he didn't say satan you are stupid you forgot i am god he said it is written he had a right to say i hope you know i am god satan i know this is you my discernment is still in place the holy ghost is in me leave this place no he wanted us to learn so he said it is written for every temptation the devil brought jesus did not use his encounters for defense he used scriptures it is written you don't tell the devil you are joking god called me that is nonsense the realm of the spirit does not care what has the bible said as your system of defense i can never fail why i know what i saw you are the only one who saw it the realm of the spirit is asking you why should we stop oppressing you i saw a vision in that vision i saw a plant and it was bringing oranges that's a vision my brothers and my sisters what will give you fruitfulness is it is written i had many visions about koinonia in abuja i would have been surprised and shocked disappointed and frustrated if it was the only thing if i place my vision on a billboard with my name written hello abuja i am joshua selman it happened on a thursday night when i was sleeping i saw the heavens open and i saw the map of abuja <laughs> you just laugh and say all these stupid people listen to me this ministry thrives not just because of visions the visions benefit us and add to our convictions but everything works because it is written one more time shout it say it is written one more time say it that means anything you tell me that is not consistent with what is written i can change it because this foundational encounter is greater than any other encounter a genuine man of god even if it's me i can look at you and say that based on the vision i'm seeing i saw an obituary this is the reason why you see many times when i prophesy to people i tell them what i saw but i'm quick to tell them no no no, no i'm not a prophet of doom we have this encounter also we have the power based on what is written to veto whatever it is that we have seen this is what brings perspective to the, orchest the operation of the prophetic imagine that you come and i leave you i say ah you came for koinonia i don't know what brought you here today because with what i'm seeing i saw a coffin may god show you mercy no i didn't i didn't know koinonia why do you think you are going to succeed in life why do you think you will see the end of this year listen 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 why do you think the dream you saw you saw them dragging your trouser and your primary school in that dream why do you think you will still succeed in spite of it listen to me it was written so that it cannot be changed I believe this no matter what my eye sees no matter what my ears hear no matter what encounters I have I only believe those encounters if I find them consistent with what is written 
if that encounter is not consistent with what is written i use what is written to change that encounter listen this looks like i'm just joking with you if you don't learn this you will live a defeated christian life having visions and you never succeed this is the reason why many people have notebooks full of visions and there is no there is no progress in their lives because they ignore this they throw it away and they begin to move according to what i saw i saw um, what's today's date i saw 15th of august and then i saw dollars that's a vision that will not give you favor it may be that god is telling you through that similitude that i want to bless you but whether it will happen or not depends on it is written what you do with that vision is you now open your scripture and you now find scriptures that are consistent with that vision that vision now supports your confidence but the real producer of the results is not what you saw is it is written one more time shout it it is If I didn't believe this, I would have died since. Since I would have died since. You don't know the kinds of visions. You know, as a man of God, people send you all kinds of things. I've had well-meaning people send me text messages. Apostle, be careful. I saw a ghastly motor accident. And they are not wrong. Some of them are accurate prophets of God. I'm not, this is not sarcasm. Sincere people. And I know that was the plan of the devil. So when you wake up in the morning and you have a dream don't wait for miracle service no open your bible and let it is written collide with that vision listen what i'm teaching you will give you confidence so that you are not you, you don't you don't become a victim it's good to be blessed by men of God, but be careful so that we don't turn you into spiritual slaves. We are supposed to help you, not trap you. This is it. You need this more than Joshua Selman. Can I tell you, if you pay attention to this even more than Joshua Selman, you will succeed. This predates my arrival here. Many have come and gone. This remains written many have said many things and have had to cancel it many people have made prophetic statements and how to honorably withdraw it but this has not been changed third foundational encounter encounter with the word of god is an indoctrination this is the reason why my spiritual experiences profit me and they profit the body because i will never exalt any vision i see no matter how many days fasting no matter what it is if a demon spirit appears to me right now the first thing is i'm going to why is it there you see if it's there to oppress me it is written can take care of it if God is trying to send a message to me for the body of Christ I would discern the message when I'm done the demon will go but your confidence is it is written yeah though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil why because thou art with me listen thy rod and thy staff that's what comforts me thy rod and thy staff thy rod and thy staff so I want you to, if you don't know what is written, it means you are in trouble. Imagine if Jesus did not know what was written. And Satan says, turn this stone into bread. He says, don't disturb me, I am Jesus. You'll be surprised, Satan will still be standing there. That's why he has not left your life. Because when you came to him, he said, I'm a member of Koinonia. He said, nonsense, what is that? What is you a member of Koinonia? Before you were born, I knew about Koinonia, I was in heaven. What is the basis? Why should I leave you? okay what else do i say now listen why should you rise in life apostle declared over me you are joking apostle declared according to what 
I prophesied, but I did as I was commanded. I didn't prophesy as I wanted. John said, I am the voice. It is not the voice that brings the power. It is the word that the voice is echoing. Are we together now? Please learn what I'm telling you. Some of you, by this, there are papers you need to go back home and tear into pieces and sit with confidence and sleep like a baby and wake up. It is written. It is written. My 2021 is blessed. It is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. Why do you think you'll be exempted from all the limitations that come? Ah, I am a member of Koinonia. That, that is wonderful when you understand it to be that I am prophetically connected based on what the Bible says. But if it's just blindly I'm a member of Koinonia, you will, you will be surprised. I'm saying this because there are many believers who do not have a scriptural basis for confidence. Satan, leave me alone. Why? I know Apostle Joshua Selman and the demon who say Jesus I know me too I know Jesus me too I know Paul me too I know Joshua Selman you have to stand and say you better know me too it is written register it in the realm of the spirit that it is written this is why I know that I will never fail in life thank God for the many visions that I have but depending on those visions for success is deception. The visions are only guides. They are support systems. I tell you the truth by the God of heaven. The basis for the victory of my life. The basis for the victory of this ministry. Is this immutable counsel of God. It is written. It is written. It is written. So when I tell you, you will rise, say amen, but don't just go back and say I will rise. No. When I say you will rise, quickly resort to this foundational encounter. Find the scriptures that support what I said. Then you will rise indeed. But if you just believe that just because I spoke to you, no. Are you seeing the balance now? this is why many of you do not profit from the prophetic ministry the prophetic ministry is not fake it is a genuine spiritual ministry but just because an anointed man spoke over your life just because he revealed and what he revealed was true when he blessed you your spiritual life went down because you had confidence that this man knows god his word does not fail but you ignored it is written It is written it is written when men say there is a casting down for me i will say there is a lifting up so based on that when i say in the name of jesus you are exempted from evil as you are saying amen your mentality is connecting that amen with this that's what plugs it into the power line to produce result anything i tell you don't just say amen connect it to a scripture then you can now say amen are we together now when you wake up from a dream and you see me blessing you and praying for you don't just dance that you saw me find a scripture when you connect it to that vision you have given it life to manifest anything not connected to scripture does not have the life that brings manifestation you can have an encounter be in the realm of the spirit watch promotion and you return back and it will never manifest in this realm but when you connect that vision to it is written some of you is a few days after now you will really get all that i've taught you maybe i will just stop at this third encounter so anything i see i pass it through the encounter with the sun does it pass the test i pass it through the encounter with the holy ghost does it pass the test then i pass it through the encounter with scripture if it passes the test then i receive it if it fails that test no matter how accurate it is i dump it in peace and i don't feel bad 
if you tell me apostle your life will be destroyed for instance i salute what you are saying but i go to it is written until i find the same thing you said here there is no reason for tears weep not for the book is opened you only weep when the book is closed hear me there are arrows that fly by day you don't need a prophet to tell you that there are noisome pestilences there are destructions that waste in the noonday so if someone tells you he's not telling you anything new are we together now he's only revealing to you something that the bible already says what today will someone tell you that the bible has not told you generally speaking if someone tells you there is evil on earth in all honesty is that new it is written already told you if someone to tells you there is a possibility for failure is that new no the bible already tells you most of the things we seek for in encounters scripture has already told us i want to succeed okay so how do you succeed if only i can see joshua selman i know my life will change you are right because of the prophetic dimension as written in scripture however you can sit with scripture this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do to do to do to do not just to read to do so it may be the doing part you are missing man of god what gives you confidence that you will thrive in ministry? I know my mentor. I know my father. Think again. I know the spiritual tribe I'm connected to. Think again. Hmm. What makes you believe you will prosper? I got a first class. And then somebody prophesied to me and said I will never fail. Think again. an encounter with the son of the living god you see because we have ignored these encounters many people keep meeting the apostolic and the prophetic ministry but they are never saved do you know that do you know that you can be in church for a long time you can even be part of the eldership and you have not met the son like it's happened to many people i'm not preaching from a standpoint of sarcasm this preaching tonight is coming from a heart that desperately loves the body of Christ and God's people generally speaking these were the things that the Lord taught me that have given me stability in my life today more than my visions listen if I come for miracle service today and I never see anything I never hear anything I can pick my Bible and read for you a scripture about healing and said the sick begin to be healed based on it is written don't tie yourself to just vi listen visionary experiences and all these supernatural encounters only become useful if they submit to these foundational encounters if you're a man of god here learn it and put balance to your administration of encounters People may clap for you while you are announcing visionary encounters but sooner or later you find out that there is no growth because it is not the encounters create convictions but their convictions are only strengthened by these foundational encounters when i learned this i found rest i travel for meetings and people expect to see the power of God people expect to see the grace of God and you would ask me apostle what makes you think that people are going to be blessed I will be stupid to tell you I hope you know that this is an apostolic call I hope you know that there are visionary experiences I will be surprised that I will stand and the heavens will be closed the basis of my confidence is it is written what was written the Lord walking with them confirming the words so every time i walk i do not walk alone you invite me but it's not only me that came i came with a battalion 
So when I came here and I began to speak and you saw the power of God manifest, it's not just, listen, it's not just because I am anointed. It's not just because I saw. It's not just because something was told my ears. More than those encounters, I know that what I saw submitted to the truth of scripture. It is consistent with the character of the son, consistent with the ministry of the Holy Spirit, consistent with the character of scripture. And I know that God will honor it. Let me tell you this. You walk in this, you have received the vaccination for error. Now God can trust you with visions over nations and you know how to administer the prophetic with accuracy. Why? Because you know how to pass it through. It is written, Apostle Jesus, Prophet Jesus, look at the respect he had for scripture. Every time they asked Jesus a question, he seldom spoke about his encounters. It is written. There are few times you will see Jesus talking about his encounters, yet he was the fountain of all encounters. It is written. It is written. They say this in your law, but this is what I say. They say this, but this is what I say. His first sermon was not encounters. His first sermon was the spirit of the Lord is upon me because it was written by the prophets. Because he hath anointed me when he was done. He now said, this scripture has been fulfilled this day. Let me prove to you that what is written is now manifest. Man with the withered hand, stretch your hands. Now, if you called him a fake man of God, he will refer you to it is written. Let me teach you something before we pray. If you're a man of God here. If you know that God has granted you grace for extraordinary manifestations of the Spirit, don't take for granted that the people who you are ministering to understand what you are saying. Show them the scriptural basis of that operation before you begin it, or at least before the end of that operation. You see me do it most times. Because if you do not see it from a scriptural standpoint, the devil may deceive you into thinking this is just superstition. Are we blessed? I have taught you an encounter with the spirit of wisdom. With favor. My life today is full of convictions. I don't teach things I don't believe. I don't teach things I'm not confident on. But my greatest encounters. Brothers and sisters hear me. My greatest encounters are not my encounters of Jesus. As wonderful as they are. My greatest encounters are not the encounters where I saw a crowd, of, a, a crowd of people. It's not an encounter with all of these saints of old. I only say those things sometimes to encourage you. The foundational encounters in my life that I respect and I honor, that have helped to shape this grace and have produced this that is a wonder and a blessing to the world today, is not just that vision. It's an encounter with the Son of the living God. His life that is at work in me. An encounter with the office and the person of the Holy Spirit. Giving me direction, helping me and guiding me part time. Investing the presence of God upon my life. Then an encounter with the word of God. Teaching me the character of the Christ and the modus operandi of the kingdom. The assignment of the anointing is to make sure the word of God does not look like a lie. I've taught you this without the, an encounter with the word of God you don't need anointing you cannot truly operate the anointing in isolation it will mislead people the assignment of the anointing is to validate what was said so if nothing has been said the anointing has no ministry understand this if the Lord says let the sick be healed and I declare it as his servant the anointing moves to validate that claim apostle I want to be anointed see how Jesus anointed people in the Bible he spent time teaching them doctrine he taught them scripture and then one encounter they had now they had the grace to validate these things many of you if I drop a Bible here and I drop a bottle of oil you would jump at the bottle of oil even if it breaks on your head you will still be laughing with the injury on your head because you believe you encountered the anointing please return back 
to the place of scripture sit down with your bible start reading it like you did before i've hardly seen anybody bring me a bible and say pray on it i'm not saying there's anything wrong please don't you if you have your bottle of oil said no problem i'm going to pray on it but i'm saying we have to be careful i've not seen anybody buy a clean king james bible and say apostle please pray on it that god will open me up to the mysteries of the kingdom no but people have brought all kinds of things people have brought sticks people have brought uh, uh, water people have brought handkerchiefs um, they are sincere people i'm not saying they are wrong people have brought sand people have brought shoes people have bought photos people have brought food people have brought all kinds of things where is the bible here it's not necessary i just need a prophetic action immediately apostle i had a dream in that dream i saw myself coming with oil and now i have come with it physically i agree and i'm going to pray for you don't feel bad i'm not being sarcastic okay so what makes you think that this oil is going to work because you will anoint it no 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 the oil is not anointed because i lay hands on it the oil is anointed because i lay hands on it with the understanding that the empowerment comes from scripture so where you keep your anointing oil where you kept your sand where you kept your your candle or whatever just push it and put a bible there don't ignore those things put a bible first most believers would prefer to buy jars of oil jars of handkerchiefs and if you tell them okay what are you going through things are not working in my life listen to this message and then when you listen to this message get this scripture you see them smile at you and live with disappointment as though god punished you i came and i stood here this is what you are doing because god anointed you but the moment you come and you say kneel down turn stand up ah what is this they now begin to say something is going on ah goodness so my my case listen i'm not mocking the prophetic i'm only giving you wisdom there are times that i've prayed for people and i said it's done they didn't believe it they stood there Abba, it's done with what i saw i saw these guys rolling up and down and you just touch me and say you are distracted just focus on me and pray for me with all your heart may god give us growth and maturity in the name of jesus christ we're going to pray i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord now listen two disclaimers one you must be wise in communicating what you have heard tonight don't go around tearing down people don't go around insulting prophets and apostles i have a responsibility to tell you this because there are many believers who have not understood what i've said but they know how to use it and tear other people they are not going to listen to me all the while while i was talking they were not paying attention and yet they will go and say aha uh -huh, this is what apostle was saying no no i have a responsibility to teach you truth as instructed by god but if and when i do communicate something that looks like i'm lashing out on people you must understand that it's number one is coming from a standpoint of love and it's coming to a people who should be matured based on scripture are we together now so some of you maybe you have maybe your church or your pastor you find them operating in the prophetic and they may even make some of these mistakes don't point hands at people you remember that the hallmark of transformation is not just knowledge it is love if god grants you the grace and you can explain and expound scripture more perfectly that's fine otherwise stay in the place of prayer and communicate love do not carry revelation like a sword and go and begin to tear people and cause injury in the body of christ it is not maturity i have to put this disclaimer are we blessed let's pray now Now that you have learned this, I can release the grace for encounters upon you. And I know that I did not make a mistake because now you know how to decipher encounters. You will be surprised 
that after this prayer as i speak over your life many of you will step into strange dimensions of the prophetic and visionary encounters but they would not mislead you and they will not mislead others because you have been taught the foundational encounters that every other encounter must rest upon please lift your voice in one minute and give god thanks for the word tonight father we bless you and we give you praise the mystery of supernatural encounters Ke la paruska te prende ke parakush ke le prahaska ta balakatosia. We bless you, we honor you, we bless you, we honor you, we bless you, we honor you, we bless you, we honor you. In the name of Jesus, the entrance of your word gives light, it gives understanding unto the simple. We bless you for the power of your word, for giving us understanding. We open up ourselves to supernatural encounters, knowing we are safe we have been pegged by these foundational encounters they become our boundary of safety and we will never walk in error because we have encounters with the son of the living god we have encounters with the spirit of the living god we have encounters with the word of god the modus operandi of the kingdom lift your voice and thank the lord no fear no fear no fear no intimidation because these three encounters are for all hallelujah by this teaching tonight find comfort if you have not yet been open to the realms of visions visionary encounters do not stand and feel bad don't let some of us that god has helped in that area intimidate you and do not use those visionary encounters as a measure sorry about that a measure of spiritual maturity are we together now no don't sit down and allow yourself to be misled that until i have these supernatural encounters i am not growing if you encounter the sun you encounter the spirit you encounter the word keep moving you will move enviably to the place of destiny every other encounter that comes is only a supporting structure but i tell you you have gotten it right if you get the sun right you have gotten it you get the spirit right you have gotten it you get the word of god right you have gotten it now let me pray for you father in the name of jesus my first prayer for everyone is that these foundational encounters will become true in our lives in jesus name hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you <laughs>